filled out the application. The application got thrown in the trash. They threw the application in the trash. But God made them pull that application back out the trash and the young man got the job. Amen. Beautiful. Amen. When God said he's going to do a thing, he's going to do it. But you got to believe him. You got to put some works with it. Lord, have mercy. Some of us, if we don't get blessed yesterday, then we ready to give up. But let me tell you, my pastor had prophesied to me. She told me I was going to work at the post office. Amen. Don't you know I worked at the post office? But that prophecy didn't come to pass till 15 years later. I received the job at the post office 15 years later. And let me let me tell you, let me tell you this. When I first took the test for the post office, I failed. So I didn't get in. But I went to God and I said, God, you told me I was going to work at the post office. Sometimes you got to talk to God like you talking to me. So I told God, I said, God, now you told me I'm going to work at the post office. And they told me that I couldn't get the job because I failed the test. But you know, it's an old saying, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. So, when the post office test opened up again, I went back and I tried again. This time, I passed. But see, I could have given up. I could have got mad at God and said, God, I could have got mad at his servant and said, well, she said, I'm going to work at the post office. I failed the test, so I'm not going in. Some of us, that's our problem. We give up too soon. But don't give up. Hold on to what God said that he's going to do. Cast your cares upon him. Give God everything that you care about, everything that you want to do. God cares. He cares, and he's going to make the way. He's going to bring you out. He's going to do it for you. God gave me the job at the post office. I worked there for 13 years. I retired from the post office. Wow. Amen. That's why you can't stop. You can't give up. Yes, this pandemic is here, but don't give up. Continue to press your way. Amen. Churches will be opening soon. Prepare yourself. To be back in the house of prayer. Because where there's unity, there is strength. Beautiful. The Bible tells us to fail not to assemble ourselves together. Amen. So we don't want to stop. We want to continue to go. Amen. Some places is already open. Some churches has never stopped. But see, I want to be in the will of God. I can't tell other people to be obedient, and I don't be obedient. We have to be obedient. We have to give an ear. We have to listen. Listen to what the Spirit is saying. Amen. 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 You be obedient, then you're gonna have a you have a you be disobedient, then you going to have a disobedient church. Amen. The Bible says the wrath of God come upon the children of, of disobedience. disobedience. Amen. So we have to be obedient. Amen. I don't think nobody wants to get back to the church more than me. I really want to be back at the church. I enjoy, I thank God that he has made a way for us, amen, to be, amen, live and live stream and still have church. I thank God so much for that, amen. 
But the Bible says watch as well as pray. You got to be watchful. You got to, to see. You got to look and see and not just jump out there. Amen. I'm praying that on tomorrow, tomorrow is a holiday. And I know that there are going to be people out there tomorrow. And I'm praying that you pray. That you be watchful. Amen. Don't just jump out there because it's a holiday. But pray. Seek God. Make sure. Amen. That it's okay. I thank God. Amen. Um, because God is so good. Amen. He is awesome. My grandson had a birthday on yesterday. And the saints, amen, they just drove around, drove around blowing their horns and had signs, amen, up for his birthday. Amen, it was a blessing. And I thank God so much, amen, for allowing him to have that blessing. Amen, we're so used to having regular parties and stuff, but we have to be careful we have to be watchful in these times. Amen. We have to learn to do things, amen, that is not going to bring harm to someone else. Continue to wear your mask. I was um, coming from my son's house on yesterday, and I saw a couple people that still wasn't wearing masks. Amen. But that's, you know, that's on them. But I praise God. And I thank God that he's taking care of us. That he's looking out for us. Amen. I want you to read just a little bit more. We're almost finished. But I, I just thank God. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil... As a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resisted steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Look, we got to be sober-minded. Um, a drunk man speaks his mind. We have to stay sober because when you have a sober mind, then you're able to watch, be watchful. You're able to seek. You're able to knock. Sometimes we have to knock on the heart of God. Because he said, when you knock, the door shall be open. So sometimes we have to knock and allow God to come in our hearts. But he can't come in if we got a drunk mind. Because a, a, a drunk mind will say and do anything when you're drunk. But when you're sober, you, you're able to hold on to your composure. You're able to stand. You're able to go through. You're able to listen. Listen to God. Obey God. Amen. I'm asking you to be sober-minded. Be careful on tomorrow. Amen. You know, uh, Mother's Day, all my kids, they Zoom on Zoom me on Mother's Day. And I counted that as the greatest blessing because I was able to see all their faces. We wasn't in one place together, but we were all together. And I was so grateful and, and so thankful that I, we got so much modern stuff today. We can still be together 
but yet not right at the same place. Amen. You got Zoom and all these other things that you can do. Amen. To see one another. We got this Facebook live stream. Oh, it is so much that we can do. Amen. And I thank God so much. Amen. So much. Amen. For that. Amen. I'm not saying not to visit your family. Amen. But don't let it get out of proportion. This is what I'm saying. Don't go overboard. Amen. We need to visit one another every once in a while, even if it's if you FaceTime in one another. Amen. Those that don't have iPhones, then you can then you can go on duo. It is so many ways that we can see each other and send that love out to one another. I am so grateful, so appreciative. Amen. I got one more verse I want to read, and I want uh, Apostle to read it for us. But the grace, but the God of all grace, who have called us in, into eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Look. After you have suffered a while, God will make you perfect. If you feel that you're not perfect, if you've been going through some suffering, if you've been going through, if you've been fighting through some battles, God will make you perfect. Amen. Hallelujah. And after he makes you perfect, he will establish you. God will establish you. Some things we feel that we wonder why God hasn't moved for us and why he hasn't blessed us. Amen. Because God right now, he's trying to perfect you. He's trying to get you perfect in him. Then he's going to settle you. He's going to give you those things, your desires. He said, delight yourself in me and I'll give you the desires of your heart. Then he'll strengthen us. God will give us the strength to go through, y'all. He will give us that strength, that power. That Holy Ghost power. After the Holy Ghost has come, ye shall receive power. Hallelujah. You got the Holy Ghost. You got power. You got power with God. Lord, have mercy. Power to witness. Good God of mine. Hallelujah. You got power with God. Stop wondering and pondering. <laughs> so I'm right to say, stop wondering and pondering how you're going to pay this bill. Ah, uh, God has already made the way. He'll make the way for us. As long as you know that you're doing right, you're doing what you're supposed to do. You know, Elder said on Friday night, he said, he let us know that putting on the whole arm of God is paying our tithes and giving our offerings and going to the house of prayer and being faithful unto the ministry. Our elder told us these things on Friday night. We got to be faithful unto ministry. Hallelujah. This is how God strengthens and takes us through. And after he has strengthened us, he'll settle us. After a while, you won't have much you have to worry about. We're going to always go through because the Bible says you're going to suffer in order to reign. 
So we are always going to go through some things. You can have money. You can be rich, but you still won't go through. You still won't go through some suffering if you know God. If you know God, you're going to go through some stuff. Even if you don't know God, you're going to go through. 